Final Cut Pro 10.8 just dropped. Here's everything you need to know. The first thing you need to know is make sure you back up your current version of Final Cut Pro. To do that, go ahead and jump into Finder, locate your applications, and locate Final Cut Pro. Right click on it and then select Compress. This is going to create a zip file of your current edition of Final Cut Pro, which you can later open up if you ever need to backdate. If you have Time Machine though, you can use that also as a backup. It's really up to you and your preferred methods. With all that out of the way, let's look at all the new stuff. The first new feature is the machine learning driven feature of Enhance Light and Color. To access it, all you need to do is select your clip, then go on over to the magic wand Clicking on that, you'll see Enhance Light and Color. Another way you can access it is by going over to your effects, looking up Color Adjustments, and then dragging that onto your clip. Now that Color Adjustments is applied, we can go ahead and just click on this icon, which will automatically apply Enhance Light and Color. The reason why I love using the magic wand for this instead is because it will automatically click that button, just reducing the amount of steps. Now that that's been applied, we can see how this changes up this shot. Originally, you can see it's got a very green tint and it's not very natural, but once I enable it, it's given us some more contrast and it's properly fixed her skin tones. This particular effect isn't an end all be all to color grading for you in Final Cut Pro. It's just a great first step to take to hopefully get your skin tones in the right place as well as adding some nice contrast and saturation. And in fact, after you've applied enhanced light and color, you can actually come up to the color adjustments and click on this icon to get into your color grading tools. And you can see all of the adjustments that it's made. You can even disable just the light or just the color if you want to. And you can also change the color range at the top to HLG, PQ, 1000 nits, 2000, 4000, and 10,000 nits. The next powerful tool coming to Final Cut Pro 10.8 is another machine learning slash AI driven effect. And that is better slow motion. I have this basic shot of me just kind of turning and looking. Selecting this shot, we can go on over to our retiming editor Editor, and you'll see that we have two options here. We have slow, which gives us our typical slow-mo options, and then smooth slow-mo. Let's go ahead and just work with regular slow, and I'll slow that down to 25%. Now that I've done that, I can play back, and we'll see that we have a very choppy slow-mo. From there, I can go ahead and go back to the retiming editor, go down to video quality, and then change it over to better for optical flow. So this is the original way that Final Cut Pro would work with slow-mo shots to give us the smoothest slow-mo possible. I'll push play and we can see how the slow-mo is working there. But you'll see that there's just a lot of blur going on with this. My eyes aren't quite tracking properly. It's not the smoothest result. So now let's change it over to the newest smooth slow-mo by clicking on this icon, going to video quality, and then selecting best, or you can do that by going into the smooth slow-mo option automatically. So if I play back, we can see how this shot is looking and it's already drastically improved. My eyes are much smoother. There's not quite so much blurriness happening on the screen. Now, again, this isn't going to be an end-all be-all to slow-mo on cameras. You're gonna get the very best results if you shoot it properly in camera. But this is super exciting to see Apple dipping their toe into AI with Final Cut Pro, and I'm just so excited to see how these tools can improve our editing workflows in the near future. This next feature is one that I have been wanting for so many years, and I cannot believe it's finally here in Final Cut Pro. If you've ever done any color grading, you know that you have multiple layers of color grading going on inside your project. For example, this shot here has two different color wheels happening. Up until now, there has been no way to distinguish between the two layers. You just had to go through and disable a layer to know what it was doing to your scene. Well, finally, we can rename effects inside of the inspector. To do that, all you need to do is either right click and then select rename and we'll just call this one vignette or you can just simply double click on it and that will allow you to rename it as well so we can just call it base grade it might seem like a very simple feature and i'm sure there's a whole bunch of people writing in the comments how davinci resolve has had this for 25,000 years that's great i'm very excited for you but i'm even more excited for myself that now this feature is in my favorite editing software now in tandem with that if you've ever wanted to get an effect that you've already Already put in all the work to get it looking just right and you want to apply that onto another clip normally you would have to select a clip push command C then select a secondary clip and then push command shift V which would bring up the paste attributes window and then you would select which effects you would want 
and then you'd paste those. But now we have an incredible new feature. We now have this Mad Max look happening on the screen and I want to bring this grade onto this secondary clip rather than copying and pasting it, we could actually just simply click and drag this directly onto the video here on the screen, or we can just click and drag it down onto the clip on the timeline and it is going to apply just like so. And if you wanna select multiple effects, you can go ahead and do that by pushing and holding command while you select the alternate effects that you want. And now we can click and drag both of those onto yet another shot. And speaking of quality of life, that is where the brand new index features come into play. It's now easier than ever to search through your timeline for specific clips. To do that, go ahead and open up your index here on the left side. One of the great new features added to the index is if we were to click on the magnifying glass here, we can now filter by duplicate ranges, by missing media, missing effects, video effects, audio effects, and retiming. So if there's a specific clip you're looking for in your timeline and you know that it's missing an effect, you can just click on that. And now any media that's getting that weird red error on it would show up here in this window. And another quality of life improvement that happens with search is up in the browser, we can now select if we want to search for keywords that start with or end with. And what I mean by that is up here, you can see that I have searched for FX30. However, you might have noticed that this specific shot is labeled not FX30, which means it shouldn't be showing up here at all. So what I can do is actually click on this icon, which will bring up a dialog window, and you'll see that currently it is set to all text that includes FX30. With the new update, we can now change it over to starts with FX30, and now only the clips that start with FX30 are gonna show up here on the left-hand side. Another great feature that's been added to Final Cut Pro 10.8 is in the last version of Final Cut Pro, we finally got the scrolling timeline to Richard Taylor's delight. I am ecstatic about the scrolling timeline. However, when we got that feature, to enable or disable it, we had to go on up into Final Cut Pro and select settings. But now in the latest version of Final Cut Pro, you can enable or disable it directly from the timeline. To do so, you'll just come on over here to the right side and you can see the scrolling timeline button. So I'll just click that and push play. And now the timeline will automatically scroll as it plays through, which is really incredible. We are in the future, the 21st century, 2024, is a year where DVDs seem to be completely killed off. Unfortunately, with this latest version of Final Cut Pro, the DVD feature has been removed. So previously you could come on up to your share menu and there was a DVD option, but that is no longer the case and you can't add it under destination. So it's just been completely stripped out. If you're like me and you still have DVD needs, you may wanna do what I did and just buy a really old laptop that has DVD Studio Pro on it. And from there, all your DVD needs are going to be completely met. It's really the best DVD software out there so just consider that what are your thoughts let me know down in the comments personally i'm actually very excited to see some of these new ai features coming to final cut pro and i think it's a big tell for where final cut pro is going in the near future if you're like me and you struggle with doing zooms inside of final cut pro you might want to check out this video where i showcase my powerful plugin pro zooms which i use in every single video with that being said thank you so much for watching and i cannot wait to see you in the next one.